Okay, so I've decided to go ahead and make a little video of how to make behind legs because um, there are, the pictures in the blog post are not real uh, good. So, I, and because I kind of squish it in a different way than I do the other pieces, I thought it would be good just to show you all how to do this. And then, you know, as far as like making a magic circle and increasing and de decreasing, this is very similar to the other pieces. So first I'm going to form a magic circle. So you just make a loop and then you bring another loop around here like this from behind. Actually just to pull the string across. So it sort of looks like a pretzel. Put your hook in here underneath that inside piece. Then you're going to chain one. And then for the hind legs, we're going to do eight single crochets into the magic loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now I know most of these only have six um, single crochets in the magic loop. I'm making this a little bit bigger to make the, the uh, part, the hind part of the leg a little bit bigger. So then I always like to put my hook into the first single crochet when, because when you pull it tight, sometimes it collapses this first stitch and it's very hard to get your hook in there once you've already collapsed it down. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my hook in the first single crochet. Then I'm going to pull the shorter piece of yarn here and collapse the loop down to make it nice and tight. <clears throat> so it forms a nice tight circle. Now I'm going to do the first uh, single crochet stitch here and I'm going to mark it. Now you can use a stitch marker. I like to use safety pins because they stay in really easy and I usually have tons of them lying around so it's an easy thing for me to use. I'll just a little one. All right, so in uh, round two, it says to do two stitches in each single crochet. So I'm going to do two single crochets in each one. So I've done the first one here. I need to do one more in here. And then I do two in each of the ones around. So I'll end up with a total of 16 stitches altogether. So when you do two stitches in one stitch, that's considered an increase. Or any, you know, if you do more than one stitch in a stitch, it's considered an increase. Could be more than two. And just keep going on around. Oops. I want to get that one short one caught in there. And you see how it's loosening up? You can pull that tight again. And once you got this bigger, you can just weave this in to, to keep it tight. Some people like to do double loop magic circles, but I've never been very good at those. I always end up with a piece of yarn sticking out of the bottom and it just doesn't look good and it doesn't hold very well. But hey, if you can do it, more power to you. Okay, I've got two more stitches to go here. Okay, so the second loop is done. You can count the stitches just to make sure you've got 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And if you're wondering what I'm counting here, I'm counting this kind of little loop. That's the top of each stitch. And that's will be the what the top looks like of every stitch that you have. It'll just be like a loop like this. That includes double crochets and triples and everything else. Okay, so for round three, now I need to do one single crochet into the next and two in the next. So I will be repeating this. It doesn't say that on the pattern, 
But um, when you do amigurumi, it usually just kind of gives you a very brief instruction and you repeat it all the way around. So first I'm going to do my first stitch here. I removed the stitch marker from the previous row, now I'm going to put one in this third row. So I do the first stitch. Go ahead and put my stitch marker in. One of the reasons why you want to put a stitch marker in is because when you're doing uh, spirals, it's very easy to get lost and not you won't be able to tell where you are and you'll end up with something much bigger than you intended. Alright, so I do one, sti one single crochet in the first one and then two in the next one. And then I repeat that around. So I'm doing two here. And then I will do one in the next one. And since there were, uh, we're doing multiples of, uh, let's see, I think it's eight here. There will be eight extra stitches added on, so this will end up being a total of 24 stitches. So I'll do two in the next one. And then one. So basically I'm doing this repetition eight times. So you see? Crochet, you get to learn some math. There's a lot of math in crochet. In fact, there's this branch of, science, of uh, math called, I think it's called fractals or something like that, that they actually get crochet artists to make things for them. Because of the way crochet is, you can, you can make these mathematical symbols with it. It's pretty cool. Hopefully I have remembered to repeat my pattern and not doubled up on anything <laughs> while I'm sitting here talking to you. But we will count the stitches when we get back. Oh, I think I did I think I did double up because I should be ending up with two in the last stitch and I will let me go back. See? It's easy to get lost. That's why when you're doing stuff like this, you kinda wanna be oh here it is, right here. I've got two singles. So it kind of helps not to be distracted while you're doing it because it's easy to mess up. So just one and two. And one, and two, and one, and two. I know this is getting boring. It's getting boring for me too. And one, and two. Oh, I think I got it right this time. Yay! Because I've got two stitches left. And I'm going to do one and two. So there should be 24 stitches here. Just so let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. All right, so now we go to row four. Okay, so now for the next two rows, four and five, we're just going to do one stitch in each round. So I'm going to go ahead and t turn off the camera and do that, and then I will come back. So just remember that since you're only doing one stitch per round, there will be a total of 24 stitches in each round. And don't forget to move your stitch marker each time. Okay, so I've finished rounds four and five, and you can see how it's starting to curl up on me. So this is the outside, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it a little bit so that... I don't end up with it going inside out. So now I'm going to go on to row six, which is where we start to decrease. So in row six, we do one single crochet in the next single crochet, and then we do a single crochet two stitches together in the next one. And this is another one that repeats around eight times. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker and do the first stitch. Go ahead and put that stitch marker back in. Ow! poke myself with it. 
Okay, now I'm going to do a single crochet two together. So what you do is you insert your hook in the first single crochet and you pull up a loop. Then you insert it into the next single crochet and pull up a loop. And then you do a yarn over and you pull it through all three loops. So you can see it takes two crochet stitches and joins them together at the top to form one stitch. So I'm going to do that all the way around. I'll come back because I keep <laughs> I keep getting in views while I'm talking to you guys. Well, so I'll be back in a minute. Just remember you're going to do one single, then a single crochet two together, then repeat that all the way around eight times, and you will end up with a total of 16 stitches because this counts as one stitch. Okay, so you can see how it's starting to kind of form a little cup here. Now we will have a total of 16 stitches. I'll go around and count them all for you so you can see. Get this out of the way here. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right, so now on row seven, we do something a little different. We're not going to be repeating the pattern that we were doing before. We're going to do um, seven, uh, three single crochets together. So there'll be three stitches where we do it the single crochet three together, two together, I'm sorry, single crochet two together. So I'm going to do the first one. So remember you pull up a loop, insert in the next stitch, pull up another loop, yarn over and pull through all three of the loops. Now I'm going to put my stitch marker in because that's the first stitch. Now I'm going to do two more single crochets together, two together. So there's one, And two. One thing I love about crochet is you can make it into any shape you want and it's very sturdy. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's a lot, it's really fun to play with. I'm going to go ahead and put this inside here so it's sort of out of my way. Like I said, if you want, you can uh, kind of weave that in and out at this point so that your little hole here doesn't pull open. All right, so now after we've done those three single crochets two together, we're going to just do regular single crochet stitches in the rest of them. So just a regular stitch like this. I'm going to go ahead and finish it all the way around to the um, stitch marker off the air. Okay, so now I have a total of 13 stitches, and you can see it's forming a little bowl, but it's going to be a little off kilter now. All right, so now on row eight, oh, I guess I should count these stitches, shouldn't I, just to make sure. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, so then on row eight, we're going to do an S, uh, a single crochet two together just one time, and then we're going to do single crochet, just regular single crochets all the way around to the end for a total of 12 stitches. So I'll go ahead and do the first stitch, and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. All right, and then I'm going to put this stitch marker in, and I'm going to do regular single crochets around. Okay, so I've finished row eight, so I'll just count the stitches. There should be 12. So I'll pull this out here and make it a little easier to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to flatten this, not like this, but like this on the side here. And then we're going to stuff it a little bit. All right, so I've got some stuffing here. I'm just going to, you can use polyfill. This is a Loops and Threads classic fiber fill. But any kind of stuffing like this will work. And just put it in there, not, not real tight, but just so it'll hold its shape, it won't squash down. It's amazing how much of this stuff you can stuff in here, though. <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty good. All right, so, so you can see I sort of squashed it on the side like that. And uh, we're going to have two of these, so you'll want to have it so that it's squashed opposite on the other one. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my hook back in and we're going to go 
to rows 9 to 13. Now we're just going to be doing one stitch in each stitch for the next, see it's row 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 5 for the next 5 rows. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Just remember you're only doing one stitch per for the next five rows. A lot of times what I like to do is just take a piece of paper and mark it as I go so that I know where I am, otherwise I'll forget. You can also count up from here. It's a little harder to do it on, on something that's this, this shape. But if you start from down here and count up to the, actually to this part, just before the stitch marker, that'll tell, me, tell you how many rows you've done. So like I've done one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. But like I said, it's easier just to go ahead and tick it off as you go. You do a row, you make a mark, you do a row, so until you have five. All right, we'll be back in a Okay, minute. so I've done rows nine through 13, and I'm gonna go ahead and stuff this a little bit right now. Pull this up here, and can I pull the stitch mark out a little bit? Remember, you want to keep that shape. Don't squish it. Okay. Now I'm going to go to row 14, and I'm going to do. Uh, now I'm going to do like a regular uh, decrease where I repeat this all the way around uh, six times. So I'm going to do a single crochet, two together, and then a single crochet. And I'm going to do that six times for a total of six stitches. So I've finished uh, round 14 and I've got six stitches. And now I'm just going to do round 15, which is uh, single crochet, each do each stitch as a single crochet, two together. So we'll end up with three stitches all together. Excuse me. So I'm going to do one, whoops. It's a little harder here because it's tight. Two and three. And then you just fasten it off. So that's what it'll look like with it kind of flattened on one side and pushing on the other. Now I've had some people tell me that I've put the um, the hind leg on wrong, but I I actually did it this way on purpose. This is the haunch of the dog. I don't have a kind of a you know rounded shape up here because it's a little harder to do that here. But this is the haunch, so that's why it's up against the the body of the dog in the, in the uh, pattern. But anyway, so that is how you make the hind leg. And I'm going to do a, a further um, videos on how to um, put the hair on the dog after a while. Thanks. Bye, and happy hooking. Don't forget to subscribe. So I'm going to do a couple of other tutorials. One will be on how to sew all the pieces together and uh, put the dog together. And then the other one will be on how to sew the hair on the dog, make it look as lifelike as possible. Um, so anyway, happy hooking. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.